Am I the butthole for respecting my late friend's wish? Me, 25 male, and my late friend, 28 male, made a bet with each other that whoever had a longer life had to wear a short dress, heels, and lipstick to the deceased friend funeral. He died first. Didn't really expect it that much. Well the day of the funeral came and I went in the dress code we agreed to. His wife and parents cried their eyes out sobbing about how he was excited for them to see me in that dress. That cheeky son of a bitch. Some of my friends and my parents think that what I did was inappropriate for a funeral and are calling me a butthole. All I see I am doing is respecting a late friend's wishes. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole people seem to forget that funerals are about the person who passed. They are not one size fits all. It sounds like had he been there he would have gotten a kick out of your outfit. Funerals are about the person who passed. I disagree. Funerals are for the living, the deceased won't be around to see it. Op is not the butthole because in fulfilling his friend's parting wishes, the parents of the deceased were expecting and happy for it. At the end of the day the point of a funeral is to help the grieving. Edit, party, parting. Not only is original poster not the butthole for honoring his friend's wishes, but even the family of the deceased appreciated it. The other people who were there probably are the kinds of people who just want to find anything to be offended at. You can't please everyone so only focus on those who matter. Reminds me of that one Dr. Seuss quote, those who mind don't matter but those who matter don't mind. Anyone who quotes Dr. Seuss in reference to a funeral and it works well, wins my respect. Well done. Original poster, not the butthole. Yeah, anyone who doesn't get the gesture couldn't have known him all that well. They are about the person who passed but are for the living. Beat me to it. Also, original poster is living. The funeral is quite literally for him to grieve. Yeah, original poster is allowed to mourn in the way he sees fit as well. This was his best friend. Even if he had offended more people than he did, I still would have voted not the butthole because Op's grieving process matters, too. Yup. Funerals are for the grieving. This is why original poster is not the butthole. The grieving family appreciated it. If the grieving family was upset he was dressed that way, didn't know and thought he was being disrespectful, and asked him to change slash not enter that way and he refused and paraded around anyway, then he'd be the butthole. But why on earth are Op's friends and parents upset if the family liked it? My guess is his parents are just embarrassed and think he looked bad. And his friends are just, a bit dim? A bit drag phobic? Don't know the family's happy with it? I get it. My family is very conservative and old-fashioned. I could see them being embarrassed if I dressed like that at a friend's funeral. That doesn't make them right or mean that I wouldn't have done it, but I don't think his family is that unique in that regard. Regardless, original poster is a champion for following through with his friend's wishes. I hope it brought even the tiniest bit of peace to the grieving family. 28 is way too young to die. Sorry for your loss, op. They are for both. If you think ignoring me wishes of the one who passed regarding funerals do you think ignoring wills is also fine? Funerals being for the living doesn't change who they're about. No matter if it was for the person who passed or the family, the original poster is not the butthole, because both parties were expecting it. The people who were pissed were third parties who didn't know the significance of the short dress, so their opinions shouldn't even matter. I think that a funeral should be a mix of both, where it can be used to help the living remember the dead, so that it helps the loved ones of the person who died, and it helps honor someone who isn't here anymore. I think this is the best action. While the funeral is for the living, if it goes too far away from who the person was then it isn't serving the needs of everyone who grieves the person. I can't even count how many ultra-religious funerals I've been to for people who hadn't been inside a church in years. One was for an atheist for F's sake. It felt very disrespectful to the memory of the person and only soothed the small subset of the mourners who happened to be the ones in charge of making arrangements. It ended up feeling for the rest of us like we'd wandered into the wrong funeral. And I'm not talking acquaintances here, this is relatives too. One of the person's multiple children takes over and the funeral becomes all about what that one person wants also true for people who try to make their queer kids straight at the funeral. I can't even count how many ultra-religious funerals I've been to for people who hadn't been inside a church in years. One was for an atheist for F's sake. 
It felt very disrespectful to the memory of the person and only soothed the small subset of the mourners who happened to be the ones in charge of making arrangements. Uck, yes to this. I was so angered at my grandfather's funeral to hear the priest discuss whether or not my grandfather had made it to heaven. My grandfather was expressly not religious. He was also one of the kindest, most giving people who ever lived. To even have someone debating his worthiness of an afterlife he didn't believe in was extremely upsetting. When my granddad died the vicar, who knew him, started by saying he wasn't religious so I'm not going to mention religion at all and I was so thankful to her for that. I agree. The other side of the funerals are for the living is that often, the living and the dead person may have different wishes. Doing the opposite of what the person would want is in my opinion more disrespectful. Hypothetically if I knew I'd die in a year or two, I'd forbid people from making it a religious funeral and want to be cremated and made into mementos. And I'd haunt their asses if they decided to not burn me. Are you my dad? He says he doesn't believe in an afterlife, but he will make an exception and come back and haunt me if 1. There is any kind of prayer at his funeral service, and 2. If I put his death notice in the Rupert Murdoch-owned daily newspaper. Yeah, the wishes of the dead person are still important. If they were anti-religion and were opposed to a religious funeral, then having one would be terrible, if they were trans and their family didn't accept that and wanted to use their dead name on markers, that's morally wrong. Even if the parents weren't happy, original poster is one of the grieving as well. This was part of their relationship with the deceased, and presumably gave them comfort. That alone should be enough, I think. F that. I'm biased because a friend of mine just died, but her parents tarnished her memory. They disrespected her beliefs trying to say that God is in charge of karma when she never believed in God. She struggled with addiction since she got hooked in high school trying to find an escape from her parents' abuse and then she never thought she was capable to get out. They used her funeral as a poorly understood dare class blaming all of her issues on her friends, regardless of the fact that she had a wide circle of friends and many of them, including me, never used drugs. They are for the living, but about the person who passed. Oh no, I preferred the party pre-edit. He was putting the fun in funeral, after all. My grandfather's wish for his funeral was, and I quote, tell a few jokes at my expense, then go have a party. No bitching or moaning aloud. So yeah, the party part was appropriate for at least one funeral. They may be for the living, but they are still about the dead. It's about remembering them, and what they meant to you. It's why I like memorials a lot more than funerals, even though that seems like a weird nitpick able difference. My family does them in a certain way that works really well for us. We all gather, if possible at a place that would be relevant to them, for my aunt, it was an Irish pub right by where her and her large family grew up, and the day is about not only remembering what we loved about them, what made them who they were, but it's also about remembering that we all still have each other, especially in a dark time. There's another piece, too, though. Our family is massive, and not everyone has a close relationship with everyone else, for perspective, I'm the youngest of 22 first cousins on my mom's side, the difference between me and the oldest is like 30 years, and some of the younger ones may not have even known the person enough to have a memory of them. So that time is also about teaching those little ones about the person. I remember very vaguely us doing that with my Nana. With the ones we had in my adulthood, this was pretty hard. In my opinion, original poster followed the spirit of this idea. You want to be reminded of the sort of person they were in life, to feel them alive one last time before you have to truly let them go. And Op's friend was the type to make a very gallows humor packed with a bestie where someone had to go to their best friend's funeral like this, and I love that energy. Based on Op's parents' reaction, I'm guessing this wouldn't have gone over very well if he'd been the one to die first. You're not the butthole original poster, you did exactly what you should have and you brought smiles and laughter to grieving parents in a way that was entirely appropriate. That's the only opinion that matters here. I agree judgment on this one completely rests on the reaction of his other friends slash family. If they'd been surprised and upset? Total, unbelievable butthole. But since they were expecting it and happy, not the butthole at all. Not the butthole, and the fact that you brought a little bit of happiness to his parents and wife is what matters the most. I teared up at the wife and parents' reactions. There's a lot of love there. The answer is as long as you warn the parents or spouse beforehand of your friend's wishes and they agree to them there's no way you can be a butthole. 
Your parents and other friends are just virtue signaling with fake outrage. Ignore them. They are our buttholes. It sounds like from the way he stated it that his friend had enough time before his passing to joke with his family about making his friend dress in drag for his funeral. I agree and don't. It's meant for celebrating the life of the deceased and for the people who are grieving. When my grandma passed away my family all wore bright colors because my grandma used to wear bright colors all the time. A lot of her friends were surprised to see us but then my aunt explained. If they expressed before dying a wish for you to do or wear something, then you can do it if you want to. Exactly. If that's what they wanted then it's fine, but if they were to just go like that randomly then yeah it'd be a little rude. When one of my close friends passed, she specifically requested that we didn't hold a funeral for her but instead a celebration of her life, specifically luau themed because she loved wearing Hawaiian shirts and flip-flops, even in the winter. Everyone showed up in Hawaiian shirts and flip-flops, and it was a wonderful celebration filled with laughing and crying and telling stories of her life. If we were to just show up dressed like that to a funeral normally it would be rude, but since that's what she wanted it was okay. That's really beautiful. NTA. This is the best funeral deal ever. I had a similar deal with my adoptive brother. Whoever lived longer had to stand up at the other's funeral and say this wasn't the way I wanted to win the argument. Mamau so cool. I wonder how many heads will turn listening to that statement. I had everyone laughing at the funeral. Because he didn't want us all crying over him. So I told the story of the only argument we ever had and dropped the line as agreed. That is such a heartwarming story. I'm sure your brother was there, listening to your story and laughing along with everyone else. You're a great brother, Orange Heart. I'm the pain in the butt little sister. Solid storytelling technique. I am impressed. Laughs at a funeral are such a relief. Yup. At my grandfather's graveside service, my father was giving the eulogy. When the wind picked up and started blowing the flowers and pictures around, my father said well, looks like dad is telling me to wrap it up. It really broke the mood and picked us all up a little. Lamau two assumptions, and both shot down in the next comment haha. My dad had everyone laughing at the funeral of a friend a few years back. We were all told that it was a celebration of his life when the family put out the notices, people were to wear red, could be a shirt, a scarf, and shoes just something was to be read, and that they wanted him to be remembered for how he was. My dad is an excellent storyteller and was asked to give a eulogy on behalf of an organization they had both been part of. Dad told a story of something that the deceased had done that had everyone over the age of 10 doubled over laughing including the widow and family. The widow approached him afterwards to thank him for making everyone remember the good times, and not just the illness that took the life of her husband. My grandma took my dad aside when she was dying and made him promise that he would speak at her funeral when she was being buried. She made him come really close and told him it was very, very important. She told him exactly what she wanted him to say and made him promise. So the day came and we were all sad. Then my father stands up and says he has a few words that she wanted everyone to hear, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, better bury Graham soon before she rusts followed by a comment about this being the longest people had seen her with her mouth closed. Graham was amazing. We lost a family member around Thanksgiving, and it was especially hard as because of the plague most people couldn't attend the funeral. They had Zoom set up so others could watch the service and every person who spoke made everyone laugh telling stories about him. That's what he always said he wanted, he didn't want people to be sad remembering him. He wanted a big party where people ate and drank and told embarrassing stories about him and laughed. We'll probably do just that once we can all get together again. A parting fit for a Viking. I've left express instructions that everyone is to tell the most embarrassing story they know about me. If you promise to take it to the grave, well, there I am. My contribution is to have my bookmarks, history, and credit card statements printed and posted. This really reminds me of the Russell Howard sketch about the teenage fan with the fancy dress funeral. YouTube link. Oh my word. That was surprisingly uplifting. Spoiler, if you can call it that, lol, I just looked up the boy from that clip and he has an Instagram page fully dedicated to sampling different weed products. It honestly warmed my heart to see he is thriving and just a regular guy who likes his gunge now, smiley face. That was delightful, 
Thank you so much for linking. Is this the one with the boy who had cancer? Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.